Wasabi Wallet. Unfairly private. Running a node is an integral part of the Bitcoin network. If you are not running a node yourself, it is important to know that somebody is running a node for you. And what I mean by that is whatever wallet you're using in some way needs to reference a Bitcoin node, which is the history of all of Bitcoin, as well as the rules that govern it. So why might one run their own node? Well, number one, it helps with your privacy. Number two, it allows you to self-verify your own Bitcoin transactions in that no wallet can tell you something that is not true across the entire network. And number three, it helps protect yourself against any interested parties that try to co-opt Bitcoin and change what it is. So if a bunch of companies got together or a bunch of governments got together and tried to change Bitcoin in a way that detracts from the value proposition of not allowing central banks to debase the currency or print more, or, you know, add inflation to Bitcoin, anything like that. Well, if you're running your own node and they attempt to make those changes, you effectively get to ignore what they do. You are a self-sovereign individual and you are your own central bank. So today we're going to be taking a look at a way to run a, your own Bitcoin node using something called Umbral. This is a software stack that not only runs a Bitcoin node with the full history of Bitcoin transactions, but also adds in other applications that allow you to interact with the Bitcoin protocol and does so in what I would say is a user friendly way. I'm Ben with the BTC sessions and this is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. Now, before we dive in, I want to give a big shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. Of course, they have their Bitcoin back loans. First thing I ever used of theirs. And this is where if you're in a pinch and you need dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because one, that's a taxable event. And two, you're worried about having to buy back in at a higher price point. This could be an option for you. Really simple. You can deposit Bitcoin, get dollars in your bank account within 24 hours. And when you pay back that loan, you get back the exact same amount of Bitcoin. Now, they also have their Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts with interest rates of up to 11.7% annually paid monthly. And they've got their B2X offering, which uses the same loan mechanism to instantly buy more Bitcoin, effectively doubling your Bitcoin on the spot. If you want to check them out, there's a link in the show notes down below. And if you use that link and opt to get a loan, they will give you $25 free into your USDC savings account. Now, up next, we have the Kobo Vault. This is quickly becoming one of my most regularly used hardware wallets. I love it because it's fully air gapped and it uses QR codes to do everything. And so air gap means that you never plug this thing into an internet connected device, which keeps the backup keys to your funds safe and offline. Now it has a dedicated secure element, keeping your seed phrase safe. It, the firmware is fully open source. Uh, they have Bitcoin only software, which I highly recommend you run. And my favorite thing about it is that it's interoperable with all of my favorite wallets. You can use it with of course, Bitcoin Core, Electrum on desktop, my go-to desktop wallet, which is Wasabi, and my go-to mobile wallet, which is Blue Wallet. So be sure to check out the Kobo Vault. There's a link in the show notes as well. Just for reference, I am using the Kobo Vault Pro, which has the rechargeable battery, which is super convenient. And finally, I got to give a big shout out to Crypto Cloaks, particularly for this video, because I am using their absolutely gorgeous Bitcoin node shell in this video. So if you want to have a custom Bitcoin node shell, this is where to go for it. Uh, so be sure to check them out. Not only that, but they've got tons of other swag. These guys are just hardcore Bitcoiners that started up a business with some 3D printers and started pumping out just awesome Bitcoin stuff. Uh, they've got a little bit of everything. They got coasters, covers for your hardware wallets, uh, mounts, uh, even night lights, just everything. So be sure to check out Crypto Cloaks, CryptoCloaks.com. And if you want 5% off, just use the code BTC Sessions, all one word at the checkout. And with that, let's dive into the show. 
Now, there are a lot of different ways to run a Bitcoin node. You can simply download Bitcoin Core on your computer and run it that way. That is the most cost effective option, uh, but you don't necessarily have the software stack on top of it but it is a free way to run a Bitcoin node. Now, I've also done a video on one called MyNode, so you can check that. There's links in the show notes. Um, and the parts here, I just want to preface this by saying the parts that I use in this video are very up in the air. You can interoper in, <laughs> interoperate with many different versions of this, different ways to put it together. So I will have a parts list uh, including how I did it with the node shell from Crypto Cloaks, but I'll also uh, reference my my node video, which has a parts list there as well, which will can be subbed in for the exact same thing here. So just know that it doesn't have to be perfect. You may tinker around and use different parts, and but I'll give you the general idea of how to build the thing. So anyways, let's dive in. So here on my desk, I have everything we're going to be using today. So down the line, I've got a hard drive enclosure as well as a one terabyte Western Digital One uh, SSD rather. And I'd say at least go with one terabyte. Some two terabytes would be a little bit more future proof. You do not need an SSD if you're tight on a budget. Uh, I've got my Raspberry Pi 4. This is the one with eight gigabytes of RAM. Again, not necessary, probably overkill, but hey, going a little bit fancier on this one. Uh, it'll run just fine on the one with four gigabytes. You could probably even pull it off with a Raspberry Pi 3 B plus, I think. Um, this is my network cable. That'll just go into my router. I've got an SD card, a micro SD card rather. This one is 32 gigabytes. Does not need to be that large. I believe you get by with a 16 just fine. Uh, I've got a power cable. This one was just kicking around. Uh, this is USB-C because that's what the Raspberry Pi is. That's the power source that it needs. Uh, and then I've got my absolutely gorgeous Crypto Cloaks node shell here, which I'm very excited for. Uh, so there's a few things that you need to know when it comes to uh, this case, um, if you are looking at ordering one. And one of them is that if you have a hard drive enclosure, it's gonna go in the bottom there, and that space is in the middle, which is where the power cable would come out. You gotta make sure that you get one where the, uh, the attachment, or rather the cable, is in the middle, because some of them are off to the side, and that won't work, okay? So I'll, I'll let you know. This one is called Wavelink, yeah, even though you probably can't see it, but it's, it's a Wavelink uh, enclosure, and that one fits in there, and we'll just use some adhesive to get it in. Um, outside of that, that's pretty much it. Now, not pictured here is cooling for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. So there's a few options that, that you can do. So there are things called uh, heat sinks, which look like this. They're just these little metal things that you basically stick on to uh, some of the chips and that makes it cooler. Um, the other option is getting something like this. This is passive cooling. This whole thing is like aluminum and it kind of soaks up the heat from the chips. Um, I would have gotten one of these for this because it does fit inside there. Uh, there is recommendations for that on the Crypto Cloaks website. However, uh, shipping to Canada right now is super slow. And unfortunately, I ordered this one thinking that it was for the Raspberry Pi 4. It was not. This is my old Raspberry Pi 3B. Um, so you can see that it fits on, but obviously it's a it's, uh, different arrangement. And so it wouldn't fit on the 4. Um, now, if you opt not to get a custom case, just do know that there are, you can get kind of like all-in-one options. This is my node that's running, but it's another Bitcoin node. Again, I've got a hard drive enclosure and I've got a case. It, this one has a fan in it, um, but there are, there is a solid recommendation when it comes to the Crypto Cloaks one. There's like a dual fan uh, cooling option that will fit inside of this case. So anyways, that's what we need. The basics of it are you need your Raspberry Pi, you need a hard drive and enclosure, you need a network cable, you need an SD card, you need power. A lot of the times the Raspberry Pi will come bundled with power and you need your case and probably some type of cooling. Uh, let's piece this together. 
All right, let's blast through this assembly here. So effectively, all you're gonna need is you're gonna need uh, two Allen keys uh, of different sizes. Effectively, to open this thing up, you uh, just unscrew, there's four screws. I've already loosened them here. Uh, you unscrew them with the Allen key, and you're gonna get, obviously, the top section with the four screws. You got the middle section here, well, part one of the middle section. You've got this section where the Raspberry Pi goes and you've got the bottom where the hard drive goes. The hard drive, super easy. So here's the enclosure, which slides apart. Um, you take your hard drive, and all you're gonna do is it slides in place, kind of like a Nintendo cartridge, old school Nintendo, for those of you that enjoy. And pretty much, you put the top on, and you slide it closed. Like so. Now you can see, I've already placed uh, some adhesive two-sided tape on this thing. Um, it's, I believe CryptoClux gave this to me. I believe it was in the case when it arrived. But pretty much all you're gonna do is you're gonna line up uh, the, the power cable or the connector cable um, with the empty spot on the bottom of the CryptoClux. You're gonna slide it into place and you're just gonna stick it so that it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, and that's, that's that. Up next, you've got your piece for your Raspberry Pi. So I'll just put the hard drive off to the side. Pretty simple here. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Raspberry Pi. Now, I previously said I don't have cooling, and that's not entirely true. There are these, oops, where did it go? Anyways, this is a heat sink. This was on a previous Raspberry Pi, and it's, it's not quite as effective, but it'll do the trick. But effectively, these have adhesive on it. For now, um, they, they go over top of the chips. I've only got a couple here, but that'll do the trick. Now, secondly, you've got these, these small screws, and CryptoCloaks gives you a package of screws, small and longer ones, like so, if you can see that. Anyways, you use whatever, depending on what type of cooling you've got going on. So effectively, for the small ones, it just plunks into place like so, and you screw it in. Um, and for the larger ones, uh, that would go with something like I showed you at the beginning. Now this is my Raspberry Pi 3, so it doesn't fit this case, but uh, effectively, this would be over top here and the long screws would go in and screw into place there. So we're just gonna screw this into place uh, as is, but I will be getting um, something that looks much like this to go over top, except for it actually has a couple fans in it. It's just unfortunate that uh, shipping to Canada right now is slower than usual. So we'll have to go without for now. All right, now that that is secured in place, I can take my hard drive, stack my Raspberry Pi, stack my top piece, my colorful piece, and stack my very top of the case into place, let those screws drop, and then screw it closed. All right, looks all good to me. And one more thing here, we're gonna take the connector cable for the hard drive that goes in the bottom here. And then we've gotta connect the hard drive to the actual Raspberry Pi up top with this USB cable right there. And then if you want, you can uh, clean this up a little bit by like zip tying it or whatever you like, but effectively you're gonna get something like this. All right, so here we are on the Get Umbral Dot com website and this is where we're going to be dealing with our little SSD card and getting the software so that we can actually run our node. So um, right now 
get umbral or umbral is early access only so you need to give them the email your email address and then they will send you a link so that you can download the software in the future i imagine this will change but i have already done so so you can see here that i've got uh, this umbral.os and it's version 0.2.11 and it's just a file that downloads to your computer Secondly, I have something called Bellina Etcher, and you can get this online. Um, just, just Google Bellina Etcher and download that program. And all you're gonna do, I've already plugged in my, my uh, sorry, not my SSD, but my micro SD card. So I've already plugged in my micro SD card. It detects it by default, but if you need to change it, you just hit change, and then you select whatever else is plugged in, okay? So that's all selected. I also need to select this file okay so i just go select image and it defaults goes to my downloads but it may be in another location for you but you select that image you hit open and then you hit flash pretty easy pretty easy so uh and i need to obviously your computer may ask for permission but besides that um, yeah, it'll, it'll take this image, this, yes. <laughs> okay. So it's basically taking this file and it's putting it onto your SD card and turning it into a workable piece of software to interact with. So, uh, really simple. It shouldn't take long. And then we will be right back. Okay, so the flash is now complete. You can just see, successful. Uh, it verifies everything. The whole thing took less than five minutes, I'd say. And it auto ejects your micro SD card so I can pull it out of my computer is right there. Now, uh, I got a little ahead of myself when I screwed everything together with, uh, with the node. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go in, grab that Raspberry Pi piece. On the bottom side, you can Hopefully you can see this, but uh, you just need to plunk in that SSD card or that micro SD card, keep saying it wrong, right there, and then just screw everything back together, and then we can get this thing plugged in. Here we go. Okay, so there are two other cables. Now that everything is all done, the SD card is in. Uh, one is this blue cable here. This is my network cable. The other end of which is going directly into an open port on the back of my internet router. And the second of which is that USB-C cable right here. And this simply plugs into the wall. So we'll get that set up right now. Here we go, one big happy family. I've got my uh, umbral node right there. You can see the network cable is just going around and I'll try and show you here. It's just plugged right into the back of my router. And uh, if you're wondering what this is beside it, again, that's my node. And that's, again, one big happy family along with my network router there. So we are all set up and you can see the uh, power cable is just going down behind into an outlet. So we are set. All right, so in these instructions, it tells you to wait a few minutes, maybe five minutes before going to the, fo uh, the following URL, which is umbral.local slash start or you can just type in umbral dot local it'll default you to the to the start screen if you have not yet set it up um, now this will be accessible through any computer on the same network whether you're on wi-fi hardwired whatever all you need to have is any other computer on that same network and you will be able to access this via umbral.local so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started in setting up so we hit start. What is your name? I'm going to BTC sessions next. What is your password? No looky. Re-enter your password. Okay. On the next screen, you will be shown 24 words. It's recommended that you write down them down on a piece of paper and store it in a safe place. Shout out to the video I did the other day on my, uh, my Stonebook Shield Folio. Uh, be sure to go and check out that video because this thing is great. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to uh, write down my seed phrase. We'll jump ahead in the video uh, to after I've done that.
Okay, so I have written down my 24 word backup phrase and it gave me a, a URL where I can use Tor browser to access my node from anywhere, not just within my same network. Um, so I went past that. And now this is the one last thing before we're all set up here. Um, by clicking next, I agree that Umbral is in beta at the current time of recording this video and should not be considered secure. So just keep that in mind, it's still early. Um, I should not put more funds on my Umbral than I'm prepared to lose. Again, important to know. And Craig Wright is a fraud, which obviously is a given and is an excellent thing to consider before hitting next. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Congratulations. Your Umbral is now set up and synchronizing the Bitcoin blockchain but you don't have to wait for the sync to complete. You can start using Umbral right away, but how? Uh, so when you click on, but how? <laughs> It says Umbral uses Neutrini, Neutrino while the sync is in progress and automatically switches to Bitcoin Core once it's synced. So effectively, it uses a way to uh, trustlessly access the Bitcoin blockchain by only having pertinent information to your transactions uh, individually before it fully syncs with Bitcoin and downloads the entire history of uh, all transactions that have ever been executed. So uh, regardless, you can use it before it fully syncs, which is really cool. So if we hit go to dashboard, let's see what we have in front of us. Um, and it's, yeah, this is, this is great. Um, we will do an overview on everything in front of us in just a moment. So I decided to let Umbral Sync uh, download an entire copy of the Bitcoin blockchain so you could see what this interface looked like having been fully synced and ready to go. Now, it, it's good to note that you can use Umbral before it syncs. You can use uh, the Bitcoin wallet and the Lightning wallet within uh, without being fully synced. It uses something called Neutrino that allows you to trustlessly do so, but then as soon as you sync the full blockchain, it will uh, reference your full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain. So anyways, what we're looking at here, by the way, obviously I've been playing around with this a little bit, getting familiar before going through it, but um, when everything is all synced and good to go, here's what you will see on your main screen here. So on the home screen, when you land, you're gonna see uh, obviously good afternoon, BTC or whatever your name is that you've elected to call yourself. Um, you got four main things in front of you and this will change over time because you can get more apps uh, and add them into Umbral. But uh, your base layer, what you've got is you've got a lightning wallet, you've got Bitcoin Core, say, so a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and its consensus rules. You've got a Bitcoin wallet, which references this node. And then you've got Tor. So uh, relaying your traffic through Tor so that it is encrypted, difficult to see what you're doing. Okay. Um, now uh, with the Lightning Wallet, obviously you've got send and receive right here. You've got a list of previous uh, transactions and a balance um, under Bitcoin Core. You're going to see that it's synchronized 100% or it's on its way to being synchronized. And every time there is a new block of transactions, you will see uh, this menu shift down and add the new block. And then with the Bitcoin wallet, you'll see a balance there if you've deposited anything or a zero balance. Um, and you'll see an active screen. And with Tor, again, it'll show if you are uh, synced with Tor and running. Now off to the side here on the left hand side, you will see a total balance across your Lightning wallet and your Bitcoin wallet. Um, and you'll see a rough estimate of what the dollar amount of that is. And you can toggle between being denominated in Satoshis or in Bitcoin. Of course, I like sats the standard, so we'll just keep it that way. Now, down on the left-hand side, you'll see a few tabs that you can click on. Of course, we're on the home tab right now. If we navigate over to the Bitcoin screen, this is where you can interact with your Bitcoin wallet. Okay, so again, you're gonna see uh, the balance here in Satoshi's and if you hover over it, you'll actually see a dollar amount as well. Um, you can see that it's active. You can see any transactions that have happened within the wallet. So you can see where I put in uh, some, some Satoshi's about a day ago and then we've got where I have my Lightning wallet and I opened a channel with it. Down below you have with your withdraw and deposit buttons 
just to the right of that, again, you've got the Bitcoin blockchain, any recent blocks that have uh, propagated across the network. And then finally, off to the right, you've got network, which gives you the number of connections, the number of other nodes that you are connected to and making sure that you are uh, in consensus with the rest of the network. You see the mempool, which is the amount of megabytes or the number of transactions that are sitting in the mempool waiting to be confirmed. So right now there's 20 megabytes. That means um, probably higher fees and perhaps a bit of a wait if you do a low fee. You've got the hash rate, the computing power of the network, and then you've got the blockchain size. So how much space do all Bitcoin transactions ever currently take up on the hard drive you are using, which is around 346 gigabytes. Um, so within the Bitcoin wallet here, uh, I just want to quickly show you uh, how we can um, do some transactions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit deposit and I'm gonna get a Bitcoin address. So this gives me a QR code and that QR code can be scanned by a wallet that I have or I can, uh, down below, there's my address here, I can hit the copy button and that could then be pasted into whatever I like. So I'm just opening up a wallet on my phone right now and I'm going to send off a quick transaction here. So I'm just, uh, I'm just scanning the QR code uh, all right, and I'm just going to send over hmm, about 20 Canadian dollars. So that looks good to me. Uh, all right, and I've just hit send. And so what we should see momentarily is an incoming transaction. Um, and that will be, if I go back, I go, oh, I believe I just saw it pop up, but where are we here? Back to Bitcoin one more time. Yes, there we go. Okay, deposit. A few seconds ago, I can see about 131 thousand satoshis closer to 132 but anyways about 16 dollars us so we can see that just by hitting the deposit screen you will get a qr code just like a regular bitcoin wallet and you can send to it quite easily now what about sending out if i hit withdraw then this is where we can construct a transaction so just for a moment I'm opening up a, a QR code scanner on my other screen here, just so I can get an address for myself to receive some funds. Okay. There we go. Okay, so uh, I've got a Bitcoin address here copied onto my clipboard and I can paste that into the address right here. Now I'm going to choose an amount just like you would normally. Uh, let's see, I've got, I'll say, let's send out 50,000 Satoshis, which is just shy of $6. Uh, conversely, you could hit the max button here, this little switch, and it will send your total balance, total available balance. Down below, you've got your fee slider, so you can choose how quickly do you want this to go. Um, I'm not in a, a big rush here, so, uh, I will slide this. Well, yeah, let's, you can also, you can basically use the slider um, and that's based on time, based on the backlog of current transactions, or you can hit custom and you can kind of pick a middle ground wherever you like. So I'm going to go somewhere in the middle there. I'm going to hit with review. That looks good. I'm sending this out. It says you're sending this much Bitcoin or 50,000 Satoshis to this address at this fee and you will have a remaining balance of 200,000 sats, roughly. So I'm gonna hit confirm, and that goes off, and uh, I've just received a notification on my phone that I am now receiving an incoming transaction for the exact same amount. So that is all good, perfect. If I hit view transaction, by the way, it will take me to a block explorer and it will give me all the great details on that transaction that I need. It'll take me to blockchain.info. Okay, um, now let's jump into one other thing here uh, within the Bitcoin uh, tab 
is these three little dots up to the right hand side. If I hit those, connect wallet. This is what I really want to focus on because this is my main use for having a Bitcoin node. It's connecting external wallets to a dedicated device so that all of my mobile wallets are able to basically run trustlessly. So I'm not having to trust somebody else's Bitcoin node when executing transactions. And this is where I think Umbral um, has an excellent, excellent kind of user interface so far for what they're putting together here. So when you hit connect wallet, you get a drop down and they've put together all of the information necessary to connect to the following, the, the following wallets and this list will, I imagine, continue to, to grow because it started smaller and it has already grown from there. So now in, in working with this, I've connected to a number of different wallets here. So um, I have already connected my blue wallet. I've connected Electrum. I have connected Phoenix. I've connected Sparrow and I was able to connect Wasabi. Now, I will say at current time, it can vary how easy it is to connect. However, this does not necessarily have to do with Umbral itself, but rather the variation with which other wallets use to parse the information that you get from Umbral to connect to it. So it's more of a just trying to navigate all of the different user interfaces and, and kind of backend connection methods. And the guys at Umbral are kind of working with that and trying to make it as easy as possible. They're also working towards putting together kind of a guide of how to do each one here. But just as an example, if I click on Wasabi, it's going to give me some information. Now I have blurred this out, but effectively you're gonna get a QR code, which is scannable, which will also give you the same information that is listed in a, uh, a URL to the right of it, which can also, there's like a little copy button you can click and copy. And it's basically an onion address, a Tor onion address. You copy that information, you go over to the wallet that you want to connect to, you go into the settings and you just paste in this information wherever it is needed. Now, as I said, it can vary. I found Wasabi was basically one click and a paste and worked fine. Whereas Blue Wallet on my mobile had to do a little bit of jumping through hoops to figure out just how to put in that information. And again, over time, I believe this will become easier and easier as uh, things are standardized a little bit more. All right, now that the confirmation on that incoming deposit has gone through, let's jump over to the Lightning tab. So when we jump over to Lightning, you're gonna see a few things. First and foremost, you're gonna see a balance that is exclusively in Lightning, uh, whether or not your connection is active, and a list of previous payments received or sent. You're gonna also have your send and receive buttons down below. Next, you're gonna have payment channels. So how many connections do you have to various other Lightning Network peers? and what channels are open. So you can see that I have just a single channel here connected to this particular um, lightning node. And if I click on it, I will see all necessary information on that payment channel, okay? Um, my local balance, my remote balance, meaning send and receive, uh, the channel capacity, the total amount in that channel, um, the time lock, all, all that uh, necessary information. And down at the bottom, if I hit, I can close the channel and reclaim my balance that is local or what is uh, available to potentially be sent out. Next to that, over to the right, again, I see a total of active channels. So again, it's saying right now I have one active channel. The max that I can send out right now, 199,000 Satoshis, and the max I can receive, which is just 1,000. So I've just opened a simple single channel and I've practiced sending with it. Just above that, I have open channel. So if I wanna open another outgoing channel, I can do so by hitting that button. And here is all I need in order to open said channel. So I need a lightning address. And so you could get that from an individual that you're trying to connect to, you can get that from a business you're trying to connect to, or you can just look up popular um, kind of like hubs where people connect to. So, and for instance here, this is Explorer from Async that has a bunch of public Lightning Network nodes and I can just kind of look on the side and see how many connections some of these have. And really simple, I can uh, 
if I click on one of those nodes, I can see the address and I can copy that information. That's the same information you get from another person if you were connecting to their Lightning node. I head back to Umbral and I can just paste in that information that I just copied. At that point, I can open a channel for whatever I like. Let's test 100,000 Satoshis. Um, and then it'll show what transaction fee do I want to use to open that channel. So this is very convenient if you're trying to open Lightning Network channels and you don't want to spend a lot to do it and you just kind of, you know, whenever it confirms, it confirms. You can set a really low fee here. You can open a channel and maybe it clears on the weekend and then all of a sudden you have all this spending capacity that you didn't have before and you didn't pay an arm and a leg to get it. So um, again, slider, just like sending out a regular Bitcoin transaction, um, or you can hit custom and choose your Satoshis per byte. So you could do like a one sat per byte or five sats per byte or whatever, and send that out and have no issue uh, getting a channel open eventually without paying too much. You just hit the open channel there. Now I'm not going to open another channel there. I'm gonna close that. Um, now there's one other thing I wanna show you before we send out a transaction. Um, here, if you click the three, the three little dots to the right of open channel, you can download your channel backup. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but basically it just downloads the state of your, your channels here. So you don't lose that information if something goes wrong with Umbral, but there is a second backup that is automated that I'll show you in a moment. And then finally, uh, up above, there's three more dots. And if you hit that, you can click on connect wallet and this gives you a drop down again of various uh, various different wallets that you can connect with um, umbral and some general kind of uh, connection information there as well so zap and zeus are two easy ones for desktop ios and android and then there's lnd connect for a lot of other wallets that you can use and also if you go to lightning address this gives you um, an address that you can send to other people so they can open channels with you so that you can route payments through your node in and out. So this would be the information you need. You just click copy and send it to whoever you like. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do here is I wanna do a test transaction sending out. So just on the main screen here, uh, I'm gonna hit the send button. Now I've already created an invoice in Blue Wallet and I have copied the invoice over to here. So I'm just gonna paste it in and it'll automatically tell you how much you're paying and the rough dollar amount. So it's just a small payment of a thousand Satoshis or around 12 cents at the time of this video. I'm gonna hit send. And there we go, paid 1000 Satoshis. And in the background here, I can see myself getting a notification from Blue Wallet letting me know that money has come in. And you can see my balance adjusts drops by a thousand Satoshis minus uh, probably a one sat, one Satoshi fee, which is <laughs> negligible. Um, okay, perfect. So we now have seen that we have our, uh, our Bitcoin wallet, our Lightning wallet and everything thereafter. Now, just really quick in the settings, just some stuff to take a peek at. Um, here in settings, we have our Tor uh, traffic re being relayed. You can turn it on and off with these toggle switches. Um, right now, it can be disabled, but eventually that may option may come up. Also, you have remote access if you'd like to take a peek. Um, of course, I blurred this out here, but uh, there is a link down below that you can copy and paste and save as a, a, uh, a browser bookmark if you wanna access this remotely. Now, um, this is what I was talking about when it comes to lightning backups. So um, with Umbral, they actually do automatic, automatically encrypted backups of your payment channels for lightning, uh, which essentially means that they are linked to your secret words that you wrote down at the beginning. And they're uploaded by default to the Umbral's, uh, to Umbral's server. And again, they're encrypted. On top of that, they also up, they also create all these decoy ones. There's a lot about it. You can click learn more to, to read about it, but effectively they have a bunch of different decoy encrypted 
backups as well. Um, and it means the long and the short of it is all you really need to know is your backup words. So if anything happens, you can get access to your lightning balance just with those. Now you also have access to change your password here. This is where you would shut down Umbral or restart it from. And this is also where you check for updates. Um, if there is an update, I've already updated twice and actually it's quite quick updating umbral so uh, kudos to them there and i imagine this is also you will where you will see any uh potentials for new apps and stuff like that that you can get now one last thing i did want to show you is let's just hop over to this other screen here these are two wallets that i've actually already connected to umbral and there's just uh to know there's different ways that wallets interact with Umbral. So in the instance of Zap, it actually gives me access to the funds that are sitting on Umbral. As you can see, the balance, although I may need to refresh here, um, but the balance here reflects what is actually in Umbral. So my Lightning wallet um, will reflect anything sent and received, of course, if I hit there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so that adjusted for it. But the balance here is exactly the same. 384,000 um, is what will show um, with any updated. Um, and, and part of that is likely f the discrepancy is the uh, outgoing transaction here. Um, and some variations there. But regardless, it basically gives me access to the exact same uh, wallets, Lightning, and regular Bitcoin to be able to send through this interface. Conversely, Kobo, or rather my Kobo on my Sparrow wallet. Sparrow is essentially a shell that allows you to either create a, a uh, Bitcoin wallet locally or to connect um, hardware wallets, so on and so forth, then all that Sparrow does is it references your copy of the blockchain that is on Umbral so that you're not trusting somebody else to run an entire copy of the blockchain, but your wallets are completely independent of what's happening with your wallets on Umbral. So it doesn't reflect that I've got some Bitcoin and I've got some sitting in Lightning and all that. It just shows me whatever I've done on the wallet in particular here, for instance here, my Kobo Vault. Um, so it's just important to notice that there's a, a difference between that. Same with Wasabi Wallet. When I connect it, it shows my balance in my actual Wasabi Wallet and any hardware that I've connected to it. It does not show the balance that is sitting here in my Umbral Wallet. Okay, so those are two separate things. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyways, uh, I thought that um, Umbral is doing a pretty good job on keeping this nice and simple to look through. It's very clean, and I really, really do love the uh, the Connect Wallet screen where you can just drop down and all the information is right there for you. As I said, it kind of varies at the time um, of doing this video, how easy it is to actually connect, but at least the information is there, and with a little bit of tinkering, you can get it connected. Um, but Wasabi was pretty seamless. Sparrow worked pretty well. Uh, and Ellen, or rather Zap, worked very, very easily, especially for desktop. So keep that in mind. Check it out. Let me know what you think of Umbral. And I'm just happy to see more options for people running their own Bitcoin node. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you're here on YouTube, please do hit like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really, really do help. And if you know somebody that needs help setting up a note, be sure to share this video with them. Now, if you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the sponsors that I mentioned down below. That was Leaden. You can get that 25 bucks for free. Uh, you can check out the Kobo Vault. Links for that in the show notes. And of course, Crypto Cloaks for this incredible node shell. Uh, I, I'm super happy with it. I love the look of it. Um, and I'm sure it will be sitting on my shelf for quite some time. Uh, so be sure to check them out and grab your own custom node shell if you're looking for that. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a lightning network tip at my tippin.me page. That is T-I-P-P-I-N dot me slash at BTC sessions. And with that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time for your daily session.